Hi everyone, welcome back. Ah, oh, just a big thank you for all the kind messages and kind words that people are saying. It's really appreciated, very encouraging. In this topic of area under the curve, there is one more thing that's very commonly done, which is the area contained between two curves. So if you have a look at this one up here, I've written the words, calculate the area enclosed by a parabola and a straight line. So there's my parabola and there's my straight line. I don't really want to go into the graphing of those. You can get them on other videos, but if you needed to, you can put in zero, put in one, put in two, and find out where they are. Let's have a look at what's going on in the, in the um, question. Um, before I forget, at the end, I'm going to take you through some further understanding, which actually simplifies the whole process. But before I do that, I need you to really know what's going on in the question. So we want to calculate the area there. And for me in maths, you know, I've been teaching trigonometry and factorization and equations and everything. This is where math gets more serious. It's incredible what happened historically to be able to calculate, accurately calculate, calculate a curved area. And it's just incredible. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the red area, like I did in the other one. And the right red area in red, which is a bit corny, but anyway, I'm having fun with it. So I call this the top or the large area. So we're going to get the large area and then we're going to subtract the small area now we need extra lines to be able to do that so if i run some lines in here so we need to get the small area or what i call the small area we can talk about the top area and the bottom area let's have a look what's going on here the large area is all the way for the whole of that trapezium i could call it other colors but i'm not going to at the moment so the large area is all the way from the straight line down to the x-axis and the small area I'm going to colour in blue and make, try to make it more obvious. So if we want that red area, all we're going to do is get the large area and subtract the blue area. So all we're doing is getting the integral under the curve, under the straight line, and then we're going to subtract the integral under the parabola and that will give us that red area there, which is pretty incredible. Let's have a look at what we do. I have to move over here a bit. So, where are we going to start and where are we going to finish? Now, if you didn't have the diagram, you'd have to find out where they intersected. Now, I'm going to go through that briefly over here. So, we've got x squared minus 4x plus 5. Whenever two equations are saying y equals, and I want to find their point of intersection, I can just make the two of the equations equal to each other. So, the parabola, where does the parabola equal the straight line? And I've got a simple equation to solve. Let's have a look at that. I've got x squared. Now I'm going to talk the way I normally talk. I want to get rid of that x on the right hand side and there's people say all sorts of things. But I'm going to show you this method. If I take x from that side, I take x from that side. And that's all about balancing up the scales and making sure they're still equal. So that's minus 5x. So I'm minus 1 from that side and minus 1 from that side and I end up with plus 4. Now hopefully most, and there's a 0 left on this side, hopefully most of you are okay with factorising that. I've got a heap of videos, playlists on factorising trinomials if you want help with it, or you can go to quadratic equations. So I'm always thinking of whether well, two numbers that multiply the four could be one and four, and it could be two and two. So which one of those? Now here's the trick. Trick. It's just a method that works that's going to give you the correct answer. So one and four will make five. So we're not going to use two and two. This two and two would make four. <sighs> So which one adds up to 5? Let's see, 1 and the 4. But what you're going to have to be careful with is this. We've got to have negatives. So what if I made both of those negative? So the minus 1 multiplied by the minus 4 will give us a positive 4. So actually that plus there means that these two have to be the same sign. They've got to be either both minus or both plus. But in this case, it's obvious that it has to be minus. So then you've got the two answers. And the two answers are x minus 1 can equal 0 or x minus 4 equals 0. So this one turns out to be x equals 1 and that one turns out to be x equals 4. Now for those who don't understand, if that's just x, we're going to use the opposite of that to get the answer. If that's just x, we can use the opposite of that to get the answer. If it's a 2x or a 3x or something more complicated, you have to go to solving the equations. But if it's just a 1x, you can just go the opposite. So have a look back up to here. And we've got x equals 1. So there we've got the x equals 1. And we've got the x equals 4. 
So now let's just calculate the integral. We're going to go from 1 to 4. And the large area is x plus 1. In other words, the top area. Then the next one is we're going to subtract the integral from 1 to 4. 4x four squared minus 4x plus 5, which you could call the bottom area. I do prefer to talk about the large and the small one. So look at our calculations we're going to do. It's not that bad, actually. So this one will be an x squared on 2 plus an x. And we don't have to write plus a constant, which when you're substituting the values, the constants eliminate each other. So that's your large area. It's incredible. And there's your small area, so that's going to be x cubed on 3 minus 2x squared. And I hope most of you are OK. We're going to put that to a squared. And we're going to divide by 2, which turns it into a 2. This one just becomes 5x. And again, we don't need the constants. So we're also going from 1 to 4. Now, substitute first the top value and then the, the bottom value. So the top value, which is actually the value furthest to the right. So furthest to the right, so that's 4, 4 to 16 on 2. I'm going to shortcut it, 8. 4, 4 to 16 on 2 plus 4. And then we have to subtract, substitute, substituting 1, sorry. 1 squared on 2 is a half plus a 1. And then I'm going to keep these square brackets in, because otherwise we get our negative values wrong. Putting the 4, 4 cubed, 4 4 is a 16, by 4 is 64. So that's 64 from 3. I'm laughing a bit because I've made up some fairly revolting numbers. 4 4 is, don't forget, it's not 2 times 4. It's 4 times 4 is 16, times 2. So it's minus 32. Plus 4 5 is a 20, and I'm running out of room. I'm going to put it down here. Minus all of this. Remember, you've got to have the brackets. I call it the B word. Put in the 1. That's a 1 third minus 1 squared times 2 is 2. Minus, uh, plus 5. And that's our answer for the area. I have so to do these calculations where a lot of people make mistakes, including me when I was at school, and I still do it all the time, 8 plus a 4 is 12. We've got to subtract 1 and a half. Now what's the trap here? I'm going to keep the square brackets in. Now look at this and we've got 21 and a third. And we've got 20 minus 32. That's subtract 12. Now here's where people go wrong. Here, 5 take 2 is 3 plus a third. Now that's just 3 and a third, so I don't need that bracket there. 3 and a third. Now we need that square bracket around all of those. And you're left with 12 take that is 10 and a half. Let's go through this carefully. Oh, it's pretty easy if you go 21 and a third take 3 and a third. 21 and a third take 3 and a third is 18, take 12 is 6. So that's just 10 and a half take 6, which is 4 and a half. So with all that mucking around, we end up with a nice simple area of 4 and a half units squared. Don't forget to put in the unit squared. Now I'm going to go back and show you how to do it the short way, and some of you will go, well, why didn't you do that in the first place? Here we go. So I want you to understand. I want you to understand the concept first before we start showing you what you can do to save time on the whole thing. And we're still going to go the one which is large is the one that's on the top, and the x plus one is on the top. So you go the integral from one to four of x plus one. Then we minus the integral of the bottom, which is the parabola x squared minus four x plus five. Now, algebraically, what if I just collect like terms? They're both going from 1 to 4, so I can just collect like terms here. So what I'm going to have is you write the x squared first. So it's the integral from 1 to 4. And the x squared is a minus x squared, so watch, it's got a bracket. Remember, this thing here means there's a bracket around all of it. So then I've got, uh, what have I got? x minus minus 4x, so that's plus 5x. And then I've got 1 minus 5, so that's minus 4. And let's see if that gets the same answer. Let's have a look what happens. How do we integrate? Talk about the i i's. So you increase the power to a 3 and divide by 3. And then this one, it's a power of 1, so I go 5x squared on 2, and that's a 4x, and I don't have to write plus c, and I'm still going to substitute 1 to 4. Let's have a look what happens with those. So if I substitute 4, 4 by 4 by 4 is uh, 64 on 3. And I'm going to go, I'm going to shortcut that because we've already seen the calculation. That's 21 and a third, so it's minus 21 and a third. Put in the 4. 16 by 5, or 80 on 2, which is 40. Hopefully I'm not making any mistakes. Minus 16. Now the brackets come in. Subtract all of this one. 
and it's going to be minus one third, that's a one, so it's five and two, and that's minus four. Calculation is a bit yucky, but hopefully they work out really nice. So we've got minus 21 and a third, plus 40 take 16, 24. I'm going to calculate all of this first, so that'll be minus. Oh, and we've got a pretty yucky calculation there. My brain sees that as minus, five, minus four and a third, and we've got two and a half. So it's two and a half minus four and a third, five on two, minus 13 on three, which is 15 minus 26 on six, which is... This better work out nice. Minus 11 on 6. So that turns out to be minus 1 and 5, 6. So I can go plus 1 and 5, 6. So actually all we've got is 25, 25 and 5, 6, minus 21 and a third. And I'm going to calculate that in my head. Can I do that in my head? Yes, I can. Because so I'm just going to go 25 take 21, 4. You can get yucky calculations, by the way, like this. Now, five, six, take two, six is three. Five, six, take two, six is three, six, which is a half. And again, we've got our four and a half unit squared. So instead of doing this integral and doing that integral, you can just put the two of them, as long as you're careful with collecting like terms and being careful with the negative or the subtraction. Oh, I hope it helps. That got a bit long. Thanks for watching. Bye.